Well, first up, there is mounting international pressure against Israel for a ceasefire in Gaza, which has seen six months of war. In the latest, Turkey has announced that it is restricting the exports of dozens of products to Israel, including aluminium, steel, construction products and chemical fertilizers. The decision came a day after Foreign Minister Hakan Fidan said Ankara would impose a series of measures against Israel for rejecting a request for its military cargo planes to join an operation to airdrop aid into Gaza. He said Turkey would continue to implement the measures until Israel declares a ceasefire and allows the uninterrupted flow of aid into Gaza. Ürdün makamlarınca olumlu karşılanan bu talebimizin Today we learned that our request, which was welcomed by the Jordanian authorities, was rejected by Israel. There is no excuse for Israel to block our attempts to airlift aid to the starving people of Gaza. Faced with this situation, we decided to take a series of new measures against Israel. These measures, approved by a president, will be implemented step by step without delay. And reacting to the restriction, Israel's foreign minister Katsa has claimed that Erdogan was prepared to sacrifice Turkey's economy to support Hamas. He accused the president Recep Tayyip Erdogan of uh, placing the interests of Hamas above those of Turkey's economic well-being. He said in return Israel will respond by preparing an extended list of additional products that Israel will prevent Turkey from exporting. France's foreign minister has called more international pressure on Israel, saying that possible sanctions must be imposed to open crossings to get humanitarian aid to Palestinians in Gaza. And uh, Stéphane Sajon uh, said that France was one of the first countries to propose European Union sanctions on Israeli settlers who are committing acts of violence in the West Bank and would continue if needed to obtain the opening of humanitarian aid into Gaza. Meanwhile, the British government's foreign office has also said that the foreign minister David Cameron is expected to meet the U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken um, during his U.S. trip and discuss maritime routes for aid into Gaza as well as push for a full and transparent investigation to the deaths of seven aid workers, including three Britons. Since the UN Security Council approved a resolution calling for an immediate ceasefire in the Israel-Hamas war on March 25th, international pressure has been growing against Israel. After Netanyahu announced he is set on a Rafah offensive as the stalemate over, Gaza, of the, over the Gaza truce continues after Hamas rejected Israel's fresh ceasefire proposal. And for the very latest on what uh, the Israel government is thinking of doing next, we spoke to our correspondent Jody Koh. Hamas appeared to reject the latest proposal, but now a Hamas official has said that they're examining it further. Now, the proposal reportedly has gone further than previous offers, none of which Hamas accepted. The latest involves Hamas returning 40 of the 133 hostages. Now, these 40 would be women, men over 50, or younger men with medical conditions, and they must be alive. In exchange, Israel would agree to a six-week ceasefire and the early release of hundreds of Palestinian security prisoners, including many serving life sentences for murder. But according to reports, Hamas might not have 40 hostages who fit these categories who are still alive. Israel has reportedly suggested that Hamas then returns more men hostages and Israel would release more prisoners. And it's not clear if Hamas will agree. President Biden has asked Egypt and Qatar to put pressure on Hamas. Israel's envoy for the hostages is meeting with his US, British, German and Austrian counterparts parts because remember many of the hostages are citizens of these countries and negotiations are set to continue for all the latest news download the beyond app and subscribe to our youtube channel